Montana. And we need a guitar string. Oh, okay. I think I got it. Yeah, which one do you need? You got a D? Yeah. Yeah, big. Okay. What are you guys playing a gig or something? Better. We're auditioning for Hubble Benson. Hubble Benson, the, the TV producer? Yeah, he's looking for a singing group to star in his new TV show. Didn't you guys get an invitation? Oh, uh, sure we did. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, okay, we'll see you at the audition. Thanks for the string. Yeah. Later. Thanks. Good luck. Hey, let's check the mail. Bill? Bill? A bit. Hey, there's nothing but bills here. How come the Martians got an invitation and we didn't? Well, you know, there are probably very few invitations. Too. Hey, it's the foreign agents. Hi, men. Did you get your invitation? Uh, no, you see, our mail doesn't come till late Monday. Oh, uh, like Thursday. <laughs> well, uh, got to split for rehearsal. This is our big chance. <laughs> big chance. Town. Right. <laughs> but all those other groups got invitations to that audition. Yeah, except us. <sighs> well, what are we gonna do? Well, we can't take this lying down. Oh, <laughs> well, I hope we starve. We are starving. <laughs> They'll be sorry when they find us dead on the floor. <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Skinny group found in California. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Why don't we just send a tape to Mr. Benson? What tape? What tape? The tape we did on that tape recorder we hired. Um, man, I think I left the tape in the recorder when I returned it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have those contracts right in the mail early in the morning. And we got us to the wife. All right. Easy on the old trapeze muscles there, Tony, baby. Yes, sir, Mr. Benson. <laughs> Miss Chomsky? Yes, Mr. Benson. Where's the dictaphone? It's broken. It's broken? <laughs> Contracts that they pay. Your dictaphone is being repaired. I rented you a tape recorder. A tape recorder? Okay. Bring it in. Are you sure it's all right to come here without an invitation? Man, how else are we going to get an audition with Vincent? Come on. You know what you're doing, Miss Chomsky? 
I think so, Mr. Benson. Hey, who are they? What's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benson. I can't understand. Sensational. Sensational. That's great. That's the group I'm looking for. They're going to star on my new TV show. Who are they? And get them over here. I can't, Mr. Benson. Can't? You say can't, I find the stars on my show, and you keep saying can't. That tape was on the machine when I rented it. I can't imagine who they are. Miss Chomsky, if you say can't one more time, you're fired. But I can't, Mr. Benson. <laughs> Miss Chomsky, you're fired. Thank you, Mr. Benson. <laughs> Benson Hubble Productions 302. Shall we? Yes. Oh, Peter, please tell me it isn't the hiccups. It isn't the hiccups. I'm going to perform as a goob if you've got any hiccups. I'm sorry about this, but I always get the hiccups when I perform for a big producer. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I've ever performed for a big producer. Well, it's 100% so far. <laughs> oh, but you got to find that group. I've called the booking agents, every disc jockey in Hollywood, and the recording company. The hospital? You don't think we'd find them in a hospital? No, that's for you. If you don't find them. <laughs> Good, I need the rest. <laughs> Listen, I'll get rid of your hiccups. Now, just imagine you're in some far-off place and you're on the rolling high seas and you're heading for Madagascar. Hey, he's turning green. Hey, Peter, what's the matter? Seasick. I've checked with the talent scouts. There will be a TV studios, all the discotheques, and still no luck. I'll find that group myself. <laughs> when I want an idiot to do a job, I'll do it myself. Idiot. <laughs> now forget it, Pete. Now listen. You're a thousand miles away. It's springtime. And it's a field of new mown hay. Oh, it's changing color. That's you! Oh, hey, Peter.
way to get rid of the hiccups. What's that? Scare it out of me. <laughs> truth to the rumor that you can't find a certain rock and roll girl. Hold it. Okay. What's wrong with me? Well, you're rude, irritable, and crazy. I've got the greatest little publicity gimmick to promote my new show, and I don't use it. That's very nice. Easy. Yeah, I'm very still nice. Easy. <laughs> the story, boys. I want to star them, but I can't find them. That's quite a story. The mystery group and the half a million dollar contract. You better make that a million dollars. It's going to be an hour show. <laughs> <laughs> Easy on the half moons, Tilda. Uh, hello, Pastor. To Mr. Benson, please. Hello, Mr. Benson. <laughs> That's probably Byron Jones in the New York office. He's always got something urgent. All right, Josie, start talking. <laughs> Easy on the half moons there. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> oh, that's very funny, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, mate, the song was yours. <laughs> Send out the invitations to. Maybe there's something. Maybe. <laughs> right away, sir. The first 
three groups are here, Mr. Benson. Well, bring in the first one. Yes, sir. Let's hear what you can do. Chomsky, let's record this. Yes, sir. Here we go. Not again, Chomsky. That's the monkeys. You know that group? Sure, the monkeys. No style group. They live at the beach. The beach? That's the group I want. Chomsky, get ready. That's the phone book. We're off to the beach to find the monkeys. But, well, Mr. Benson, we're as good as they are. Oh, ho, ho! <laughs> Terrible racket, man, it's your plane. Oh, no. Sounds more like the foreign agents. No, no, it sounds like the four Martians. You know what it sounds like? Yo, ho, ho. Hey, it's Mr. Benson. Hey, it's Mr. That's it. That's the sound. Irene Chomsky. I never knew. Right under my own nose. What's wrong with me? Well, you're rude and polite. <laughs> You know, I really feel bad about blowing that big chance, man. Don't worry about it, Peter. We all felt bad. Yeah, but I felt so blue I wanted to do something silly like... Forget show business and go to the South Seas or something. No kidding. Then after all, I thought to myself, so what? So we lost a hundred dollar job. Hundred dollar a week? Peter, stars made more than a hundred dollars a week. They do? Sure they do. How much do they make? Oh, I don't know. Some of them make as high as five thousand dollars a week. Five thousand? Five thousand dollars? Don't you worry, Peter. One of these days we'll get our break. Peter? He's gone. He's gone. Well, he's about uh, uh, five ten. He's light brown hair. Now he cries a lot. He has hiccups. Yeah, hay fever. And he gets very seasick. But he still may be heading to the South Sea. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I have a pencil here somewhere. Oh, a pencil. <laughs> pictures that have fights in it and uh, gangsters and everything. Do you ever get into fights yourselves? Dude, uh, we had an incident in Hawaii where somebody uh, remarked about my hair. Uh, what? My hair being long, you know? Yeah. And there was like 
10 big guys <laughs> and little old me. Are you sensitive about that? Um, I'm not sensitive if it, you know, if it's like, you know, in jest, somebody yeah. laughs and says, you know, yeah. it's yeah. one thing, but if they carry on about it, it makes me mad. If you went into a restaurant and uh, they, you know, refused to wait on you because of your hair or something like that, no, are you quick to strike back? I invoke my constitutional rights. <laughs> what do you do? You leave? No, I go, I invoke the Civil Rights Act. But there's been a lot of talk about the riots that have been going on in Sunset Strip. There was a riot. You know, there was a lot of vandalism. There haven't really been riots. They've been, in actuality, since I, since I was there, they've been demonstrations. And, uh, but I guess a lot of people and uh, journalists don't know how to spell demonstration, they, so they, they use the word riot because it only has four letters. First, tell me a little bit, what, quickly, what are the demonstrations and who's taking place in them? Well, it's mostly the kids um, that are uh, from the ages of around 15 to, I'd say, 20 or 21 uh, under 18 it's a california law that uh, you're not able to go into a teenage nightclub uh, that sells uh, alcoholic beverage there's a 10 o'clock curfew imposed on these young people that uh, uh, regardless of whether it's a, a good thing or a bad thing uh, they still don't like it and i think it probably has a lot to do with the fact that uh, uh, of somebody telling them they have to be in by 10 o'clock. Um, that's sort of the same thing as saying that they have to cut their hair. You know, I mean, it's it's against the law to tell somebody they can do that. Which would you like to see all thing. the kids in the country wearing hair like yours? I would like to see all the kids in the country wearing their hair like they'd like to wear it. How do you feel? So, Mickey, how do you feel about it? Exactly. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm with you. When it first happened, there was a few comments made, one by the, the sheriff of Los Angeles. He said that the curfew should be abolished. He says, take the babysitting job out of the hands of the police, put it in the hands of the parents. If the parents think their kids can be out after 10, they should be out. Most everybody that was there says that the vandalism was caused by kids in their very late, like 18, 19, 20, and 21, like that age kid. The only people representing the kids are the kids themselves. And nobody listens but to not kids there. talking for kids because kids are only kids, you know. And they go through this vicious cycle. Authority does. I'm being very general because I don't want to, like, call names or anything. The reason I haven't spoken all this time is because the, it doesn't matter what I say. Nobody will listen to me because I'm under 21. <laughs> so I'm just keeping my mouth shut. <laughs>